When is a curse a curse and a blessing a blessing without blurring the difference between? Or is it like two faces of God Janus, one to begin and one to end, from here to there and then, ascend to a knowing acceptance that there is a latitude, even gratitude, that encompasses all. Pain, gain, cost, loss, even enemies, and especially friends. All parties are invited to the pantomime party to party. It's a Purim party. It was a curse when Queen Vashti, so the story goes, lost her life because she had had enough of being an object and not a wife. A toy to be toyed with, well, it was not her thing. She was not to be treated as if her modesty was nothing, even if her husband was the king. He and his vain counsellors worried about a domestic rebellion thing, had her taken, seized, her neck to wring. After all, he was seemingly the divinely given, omni-important king, and she was just a woman. It was a blessing when Esther, a foreigner in guise, a Jew to boot, ascended to the queenly pride. With coaching from Uncle Mordecai, she learned what was at stake. When the powerful Harman, a first-class rake, plotted the lives of her people to take, because Uncle would not bow down, Harman's ego to slake. So it went the gallows and the odds, and Esther, never one given to God's wee rules, now saw it her duty to embark on a risky plan, her king, the man, to scan. With all her beauty and brains, with much to lose and much to gain, and she was just a woman. It is a curse when the modern Harmons with their kings in tow, plot and seed fear and loathing to grow. Not only Jews, though they've probably had it the worst, but those of darker skin, foreign tongue, sex, gender, all have fallen to the Harmon curse. That is of failing to bow down and ego to slake and thus putting their loved ones and lives at stake. And it is not just women the Harmons hate. It is a blessing when the modern Vashtis and Esthers stand facing, bracing, into the turbulent winds and rebuffing the glowering of power and the urge to cower before these men of unslaked pride and deep wide need doing the right thing when it is the riskiest thing comes at a cost rarely refundable always a loss doing right to help those wronged is not seen as bright but wrong subversive of right order that is the order of the right, their right to order, yours, ours to obey. Courage, tenacity, a pinch of fool, is what the Vashtis and Esthers need to flout the cruel designs and egos of Harmon's brood. And it's not just so many people's fate. It is a curse when we forget the stories, be they factional, a factual fiction or fictional fact. For in the forgetting we forget that we need to act. 
today, right now, to right new wrongs, to sing Māori's redemption songs, to correct and protect, lest we forget the harm that has been done, doing, redoing, by the harmons and the minions to the millions of planet Earth. Forgetting is not an option this day. Remembering we weigh up what's needed and the scales dip. It's not a blip. It's core. If you still believe in it all, for truth, justice and recall. For to recall is to remember, is to re-engage, is to reclaim the beauty of all. No one is to be left behind. It is a blessing, these stories of old. In a book named after a woman, truth be told, who was not vigilant in her piety, far from it. When others would pray, she would sit. When others would recite, she would knit. When, for God was not in her purview. So what is a story doing in a Bible where God is for the viewing and prayer and piety is for the pursuing? Could it be what matters more is that courage is to the fore and saving her people is the score and not the earnest beliefs, the faithful war. Personal piety or acts for society. And prayer, what a prayer. Words ascending the stairs to an omnipotent one. Might not prayer be the scheming, the dreaming. To bend a knee and plea for her people to be free. Having tipped the odds on what the answer would be. Thus God is an action, not a distraction. Prayer, a transaction, not a refraction. God is for the doing. In this current time of curse, when I ply you with verse interspersed with alliteration, when we are beset by COVID-19 fears and need to reset, to thwart the threats, when fiscal pain and mental strain are there and not waning. What hope does this story of heels and heroines hold? In this current time of blessing, when we can walk and talk, bake and redecorate, feed and read, Spend time alone, save for the phone. When the birds get a break from the traffic we make, and our souls are given space. What hope does the story of heels and heroines hold? Well, in short, with ladles of port, the hope is in the party. That all the characters so heartily Attend festooned, there's usually balloons, and drink to the health of surviving. Harmon's there looking a little shy. The king's there and Mordecai. Vashti comes, wearing more than her crown. Esther is there in her exquisite gown. There is the proud and pretentious, the cosseted and contentious. The weird and the wonderful, the feared and the fanciful. All are there, she, they, he. There's room for all, even you and me. And this is the truth of the party, the sooth of the story. We gathered are gathered. That is, it is about us being there. Whether a winner or loser, who cares? 
where the friend or enemy we share in the pain and gain of blessing and curse. We raise a toast and remember the worst and raise a pledge that this day, that first, we swear we will care and carry one and all, the big and the small, come what may. And God, thanks be, is in the toasting, the hosting, the we, the free, you and me. All parties are invited to the pantomime party to party. It is Pulong. Thanks be.